sort anything out at this point? No, the, the quarterbacks, you know, I, I'm not making an excuse for a quarterback, but we were, you know, we're playing. I, I'm protecting some of the older receivers, and it looks like it's awful when you start pulling those guys out. So that's an alarm for down the road. We got to get much better. So, but they were better today. You know, the receivers played better. You know, going back to last year, you reminded us that you know, Joe and Dwayne were neck and neck in, in the training camp. They've been close going back and forth throughout spring. If it stays that way for two more weeks, I don't know. We'll just worry about Monday's practice. Now that's over. Let's have a good Wednesday. But, you know, you wish one would take it, and that has not happened. Second row right, Bill. Um, another quarterback question. Where where have you seen, I know they are obviously competing, but where have you seen individual growth with Wayne, Joe, and Tate in the spring, like individually? It's day-to-day. -day. Uh, Tate had a much better day-to-day. -day. Uh, you know, He's got a skill set that's a little bit JK, uh, JT ish as far as the Q run, the Q. Um, you know, he's just built for that. And then he actually threw the ball. He threw the ball well, too. Joe probably had the better scrimmage on Saturday, uh, but then Dwayne came back. So it's, it's you know, once again, it's where have I seen the individual growth that would take too long to go through each uh, guy? But, you know, I, I think. The, the quarterback situation, you'd wish one would take it, but then again, you like having the day-to-day -day competition, which is what I'm seeing. And they started very poorly today, and, and the quarterback receivers got much better as the day went on, which is encouraging. Front row middle, Tim. Urban, uh, Thayer Munford was a guy you took offered late in the process a year ago. Four, 14 months later, he's got a chance to start at right tackle. What, where have you seen the biggest amount of growth with him that's given him an opportunity to compete? Yeah, a lot of credit to a lot of people. You know, his family, then the coach at uh, Nate, at the coach at Maslin, and his family for taking him in, and, and uh, his coach Stud for sticking by him after, you know, we denied him, denied him, denied him, and then uh, uh, he's going to be a very good player here. He's a very consistent, one of our more consistent offense linemen. In the Michigan game, but people also remember Thayer had to play a few snaps. How much of that was kind of, you know, depth at offensive tackle a year ago, and how much of that was just a young kid who, even as a freshman, just forced his way into the two deep with how he practiced? Yeah, freshmen shouldn't have to do that, especially him. That's just what you said. There was some recruiting errors and et cetera. So he was forced into action, but he's, uh, I'm glad he was, and I'm glad, he, I'm glad he's here. Front row left, Doug. Urban, you always talked about what a good practice player JT was. When you have an established quarterback who is a good practice player, what does that do for the rest of the offense in practice when you're going 11 on 11s and stuff? And then maybe what does it do now when you're not in that situation? That's a great question. One that uh, I've had those great quarterbacks that uh, they're great practice players. They raise the level of play around them. They don't, uh, you know, I call them palms up guys. They're not the guys that look at, look at the coach like this. They just keep the group going. It's the most unique position in all of sport very strong opinion about that where everybody's looking at you if you're doing that then you have an offense that's doing that uh jt was you know uh, among as many strengths that we had the strength you just said might have been as as more powerful than anything so uh, we're not there we're, you know you can see the void but at times you can see it get much better we're much better today in practice nine i believe it is than it was practice two or three and i know there's there's those rare guys and i know you went through it with tebow I imagine the way you talk about JT, it's similar. Just when you have a guy who's such a huge part of the program for so long, does it just take a while sometimes for sure. that void that just, you know, you just miss him for a while because he was there for such a big deal. Yeah, and, uh, but the other guys have been here. There's, there's guys have been here for a while. Joe and Dwayne, Dwayne not as long as Joe, but they've been here for a while. And, and I don't want to be negative because they're doing much. I mean, it, that was a pretty good practice today. And a lot of guys doing some. So, yeah, you miss JT. But uh, early on in spring, the void was ob very obvious. I don't feel that void as much anymore. And I'm hoping that closes by the time we get to the end of summer. Front row right, Bill. Um, yeah, we're now halfway, more than halfway through spring practice. Can you just kind of give your general assessment of, of where the team is in terms of the progress that you hope to see versus where it is? Um, just the. Uh, Amount of new players out there, I think the defense is way ahead of the offense. I think the, uh, and you're also you're being cautious with guys like Joey, uh, Nick Bosa and Draymond Jones. So we're developing them with the depth on the defensive line and the linebackers. You get one of your best players who's going to miss some months, several months with tough. So I, I'm actually pleased our safety position is now solid. The one is Jordan Fuller's. Uh, we got to keep him healthy because he's playing excellent right now. And you see, we don't have you know. Mistakes a corner. We have very good 
uh, rotation at corner right now. So there's so many strengths on defense right now. Offensively, you're just trying to find the right five up front. And uh, that's hard with Michael Jordan, who's not practicing. And there's one other, uh, Bowen. And then you also have KJ Hill, and I'm protecting the Paris and Terry. So it's it's a little bit of herky jerky out there. And you know the answer is go and play those guys and put them in harm's way too much. I'm not going to do that. Just have to fight through it. Do you feel any more certain that you will have a at least a clear leader at quarterback by the end of spring? Uh, I don't know. I'll worry about practice. Whatever ten. All right, Irvin, uh, why can't you play three quarterbacks? <laughs> if one could play receiver, and you know, people say that, you know, just play two at a time, play two at a time. People say that don't really know what they're talking about because what do they play? You know, just put him at receiver. Okay, just put anybody at receiver then. So the one thing, Tate's got an incredible skill set. There's some conversation about that because he is a gifted guy. Yeah. Uh, is football practice almost set up for you to be sort of like a little bit miserable every day because you do want to see your defense playing well, but you want to see your offense playing well? And how do you, how do you over the years, have you learned to deal with that, judge that, know that if the defense is playing good, maybe you're not going to be happy with the offense? Well, I think it comes down to matchups. If the defense is playing well because of, you know, very good players and defeating blocks and all that, if it's because of chaos or because of missed assignments and because a guy just getting whooped by, then it's, you know, yeah, that's, that's tough. And defenses should be ahead of the offense really all the way through training camp and, and all the way through spring until you, unless you get really established players. So I'm fine. I've done this long enough that all part of the process growing up. Last thing, at least for me, uh, for a guy to take the reins, to, to be that quarterback you want to see at the end of spring, what, is, what has that fellow got to do? show you in the next six practices? Well, I just lead the team, and there's got to be a separation at some point. And right now, there is not that separation. And just when one starts going, the other one comes up, and the other one drops a little bit. So, um, and I'm talking about the three. So. Second row left, all right. Urban, you guys um, recruit a ton of different areas all over the country. And sometimes I feel like you, or you do need to go into some pretty tough areas. Um, in situations like that, how much more challenging can it be to recruit? A tough area for competition, like, you mean? or what do you No, mean? just tough areas like kids being exposed to things like drugs and gun violence oh, and stuff. Yeah. And um, the reason why I asked that is because I know you just got asked about Thayer, but Thayer's been exposed to some of those things. Do you have to look out? for certain things when you're recruiting a player that's been exposed to things like that? And how do you recruit areas and prospects and kids like that that have been exposed More cautious than we've ever been uh, about digging in deep. And, and you have to have somewhat uh, confidence in everybody there is going to be truthful with you, which that's happened in the past so they were not. But, you know, that's I don't I put it on our staff and the area coach, and then I do as much homework as I can. But those are great questions, especially nowadays. you got to be extremely careful. And uh, we got really good guys here right now. This, you know, I, I use the term healthy. This is a very healthy program right now. And the worst thing you could ever do to a healthy program is bring chaos into it. And I, I, I'm watching that as hard as I ever, ever have. And when you were recruiting Thayer, obviously he's in a position to be a starter as a redshirt freshman. He had some academic issues in high school. I think that he grew up in some pretty tough areas that he was telling me about. What did you see from him during the recruiting process that said, hey, we should take I did not. Process? I did not. I saw uh, the coach at Maslin and his wife who took him in. I saw uh, our offense line coach that there's nobody. To, I can't imagine a guy doing a better job than what he did as far as hanging in there and doing all the homework. And then when they finally presented to me, and Gene Smith was involved in that decision. Once you met with him, you found out his background, you find out all the support. Um, I just think there was a bunch of people that did, work, did their work. And, you know, I don't want to get as emotional about saving someone's life, but this has been good for Thayer now to be in this kind of structure. And he's, he's an awesome guy, awesome guy. He said that there was being in this program and having the opportunity to start is a chance for him to save his family. And I know wow. that that's a pretty important thing. Pretty to bold statement, like, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know. Well, God bless him because he's, he's, if, if that's one of his focuses, you can see it every day. He's doing a hell of a job. Got time for two more questions. Far left, Dave. Urban, every team is different, has different strengths. Of course, you've talked about this before, just adjusting to the strengths of your players. Can you just talk about that process, how it pertains to, to this year's team? That's still, in the, uh, you use the word, that's going on. That's the process. That's the evaluation. Uh, we, at the end of spring, we'll list our top 20 players in, in order on offense and defense. 
and that'll be determined what kind of style offense and defense we are. There's been times we've been more of a downhill. There's been times we've been more of a perimeter run game. That's going to be dependent upon who our best players are. And, uh, you know, obviously we've got a little different style quarterback, potentially. If it's Dwayne, a little bit different. You know, Joe can do both. And uh, Tate's a little bit more in the JT mold. So a lot of that's going to be dependent. The good thing is it's very flexible. We have, we, you can't name a play that we don't have. It's fitting that together with our personnel. And final question, second row middle, Adam. Urban, how much of your conversations with the quarterbacks are leadership-based and how much of it is more technique? I am more leadership based, and then uh, Ryan, that's his job with the technique. And, but Ryan, a big, time, a big part of that's leadership as well. How do they respond to that? The oh, they're great. They're great. They're good dudes, and they're good people from good people, and they all want to be the quarterback at Ohio State. Well, Thanks, thank guys. You very much.